Hi everybody, this is my walk away story. I came from a fairly left-leaning family. I was indoctrinated at an early age to believe that taxes go towards the greater good and that rich people don't pay their fair share. 99% of the hole punches that I created, the chad that I made, were for Democrats, save the one exception, the great governator Arnold Schwarzenegger of the state of California. In college, I believed that government was basically good, that it could solve a lot of our problems. And when Bush Jr. was elected for the first time, I was shocked. And even if I have to admit that Al Gore was stiffer than an oak tree. When Obama emerged victorious in 2008, I was jazzed. I thought it meant our country had moved beyond the racism of the past. That was like the holy grail for black people and anti-racists alike. And I figured that the only thing left to do maybe was mop up a few KKK members. Instead, what is actually taking place today is a surge in racism accusations. It's completely watered down. Never been a better time to be a racist. I should know because I was indicted in these crimes. Here's my alt-right resume, according to my accusers. I once stated that two-parent families yield significantly better results than single-parent families. This, I was informed, was highly highly racist. I had the nerve to state that America is a wonderful place and that it offers you freedom of choice, freedom to decide what you do and your actions, and that if you work diligently and intelligently, you can overcome virtually any obstacle, including economic ones. This statement, I was informed, of course, came from my white privilege and was thus racist. I also once made the mistake of commenting on an inner city problem and was scolded viciously and told that only black people have the right to speak on such matters and only they decide the direction of their communities. But this one, of course, was racist, but was it on my part? I mean, but this specific t incident they went out and they tried to exact their pound of flesh. They messaged mutual Facebook friends and demanded that they unfriend me immediately, leaving me to have to spend over a half hour of my valuable time explaining my side of the story. My side of the story was that I am entitled to have a logical, thoughtful opinion about a subject. Economically, Cracks started to appear pretty early. I had a good year financially. I wrote pretty big checks to the state and federal governments. And my friends who paid about 10% of what I did almost made me feel guilty that I didn't pay more. It's kind of like going out to dinner with a buddy. The check comes, he throws down $5 on a $50 bill, then looks at you and bro, pick up the rest. You can make the argument that because I make more, I should have to pay more, but don't sit there angrily waving your fist and telling me that we don't pay our fair share. Then I started realizing exactly where my hard-earned tax dollars were going to, to pay for stuff like prisoner sex change operations, possibly for murderers, to rent-seeking, operations, corporations, tons of graft, to the employment of diversity and equity consultants at universities whose functions consist of making life a living hell for everybody on campus, but in fairness, they also bloat the bureaucracy. All the meanwhile, they're taking home six figures of taxpayer-funded money a year for their efforts and indebting our students even greater, they're getting paid to have equity and diversity crammed down their throats. 
when you go to the DMV and you see the long lines, the uncaring workers, government in action, and I listen to Democrats continually yelling about the need to expand government reach, the private sector is a million times, a million billion times more efficient than the public sector. Thought exercise, contrast, DMV to the silky smooth Apple store. And let me ask you, you want to open up more DMV franchises? I'm not saying that government isn't needed. It is. There are certain rules and regulations that must be enacted, stuff that protects the public, stuff such as to protect against negative externalities. So, for example, you have a factory that wants to go cheap, save money to increase profits, of course, and they decide the best thing for us to do profit-wise is to dump our toxic chemicals into the river. Of course, this harms the nature in the area and everybody downstream. The cost to society are far greater, yet it's not paid for by the corporation and this needs to be protected against. But when you have so much bureaucracy, so much red tape that it prevents people from building, from opening up new businesses, it puts a real damper on it. All you're doing is protecting the large corporations, the Walmarts, the Amazons, the Apples, the Googles that, that are already established and can bear the burden of the additional cost. It, does, it actually harms competition and job growth because it's like a rainforest, a canopy of a rainforest and the sunlight is taken up by all the leaves, all the huge trees drown out the seedlings that are trying to go. It protects against competition and a lot of these rules and regulations are actually employed by industry at behest of their lobbyists in government. See, the truth is I consider myself liberal in many ways. I'm environmental. I love beautiful nature that's protected. I believe in science, meaning climate change, likely. 68 genders, you flew over the cuckoo's nest. I'm totally okay with gay marriage, but you don't have the right to force someone to decorate a cake if they don't wish to for any reason, unless they're legally your slave. I'm very begrudgingly pro-choice, albeit with some limits. I think that taxes are needed to pay for stuff like military, roads, fire, police, education, national parks. But fiscal restraint is an absolute must, and the Democrats get an F minus in that. The Republicans, only slightly better, but I'll take slightly better. And let me tell you, when I say I consider myself liberal, I'm referring to its original meaning as being in favor of the individual, of the liberties of the individual. It's a live and let live attitude that is just the opposite of what has gripped the Democratic Party of today. When I was growing up, it was the Republicans who were the moral authoritarians. And somehow, that hall monitor job has sh shifted leftwards. I'm tired of being told what I can and cannot do, what I should think, what I can and cannot say. See, I believe in personal responsibility. And when I see politicians like Elizabeth Warren continually attempt to install victimhood in the population by trying to get them to blame their troubles on corporations as though people aren't in charge of their faculties and their decisions. It's the most disempowering message that I could imagine. And if somebody tried to introduce such ideas into the mind of my son, I would want to destroy them. You see, when I have a problem, I honestly, I pray that is my fault because that means that I have the ability to fix it. And that's what being human is. And when it costs $600,000 in taxpayer money to pay for security to allow Ben Shapiro to speak at UC Berkeley and the, the protesters are sitting there chanting, Nazi scum, Nazi scum, Nazi scum. 
and this diminutive Orthodox Jew walks by wearing a yarmulke. When they demonize, when the media demonizes the Covington kids and refuse to apologize when it turns out that their reporting was not factual and a smear job, and meanwhile they try to promote Jesse Smollier's This is Magal Country staged a f attack and try to get us to believe that America is some evil, horrific place. When Antifa attacks a five foot five Vietnamese journalist named Andy No on the streets of Portland and yo, yo. does not endear me to your cause. But regardless of everything that I've listed here, the real deal breaker for me is when the left tries to pass hate speech laws and slowly gut our First Amendment. Much as you would boil a frog, you stick the frog in water and turn the heat up slowly. I will fight against this. It is jumping off the cliff of insanity because in my opinion, that amendment is written on the most sacred parchment that our society owns. It's the bedrock of our democracy and to be protected with every ounce of strength that we have. Government should never be able to control our speech. Our freedom to express ourselves is an inalienable right and is the mechanism which we use to settle our differences peacefully. Freedom of speech and the right to bear arms, these were the first things that the Nazis, the Chinese communists, the Russians, and the Cambodians took away from their population. 100 million people perished. And I will not allow the fascistic left to chip away at our rights to free speech. I will not allow them to erode this bedrock of our democracy. And honestly, this, this is the hill that I am willing to die on. I don't even know that I'm going to vote Republican because I have a very live and let live attitude that's more in line with libertarians. But I know who is firmly against this ethos, and that is the Democrats. And until they're able, the Democrats are, to denounce the, com the hateful, vengeful communists. By the way, I consider a communist flag to be akin to a Nazi flag. You want to promote it? I view it the same way. And it's a shame that most people aren't aware of the history and I suggest that they read the Gulag Archipelago. I have half of it. It's very long. Uh, until the Democrats are willing to disavow and box out the communists and the Antifa types, much like the right has done so with the alt-right, with the neo-Nazis and the KKK, they have no shot of ever earning my vote. And my final thought is, you can debate my voice, but don't try to silence me, because that's protected by our First Amendment. Bye-bye, blue. Bye-bye, donkeys. Red elephants are marching. Hope this gave you added insight into how some people perceive the political situation of today. Walk away.